Hello wonderful person, this is Anton and in this video we're going to be talking about binary planets or large planets with large moons or rogue planets, actually all three all at once. We're going to imagine a system somewhere out there without any star that actually has a habitable planet. Welcome to What The Math. So a long time ago when um, Earth and Moon were just kind of created and Moon was much much closer to Earth than it is today, it actually produced a tremendous amount of tidal effects on the surface of our planet. This resulted in our planet having a lot and a lot of uh, activity on the surface including volcanic eruptions, including um, tidal waves, um, earthquakes and so on. And it's very likely that our Earth was actually much warmer because of this. So. Could there be actually a system of two planets or binary planets or basically a large planet and a large moon where one of the objects is actually warm enough to sustain life on it because of the tidal effects? First of all, if we actually analyze our solar system and if we look at some of the studies that try to predict how many planets may have been here in the beginning when the solar system was just made, there's actually a lot of evidence that there are several planets missing from our solar system and some of them were possibly even as large as Jupiter. And so let's imagine that a very large planet, like for example Saturn, um, or something similar to Saturn, flew by one of the planets um, in our solar system and maybe even capture it. And uh, this may have happened, um, well maybe not in our solar system, but in some other solar systems, some other star systems that is. And at some point, these two planets basically turn into binary planets on the way out of the star system. And as they left the star system, they moved farther and farther and farther away from the sun, but may have been close enough to each other to actually start influencing each other um, gravitationally. In other words, they started giving each other a lot of tidal effects. So that's kind of what's happening here now. So let's zoom in on this a little bit and actually maybe make this a little bit more hypothetical by creating two randomly generated planets in a binary orbit around one another. So this is at a distance of about six times uh, closer than Moon is to Earth. And here, if you look at these objects, you'll realize that even at this distance, uh, their temperature will actually start changing a little bit. As a matter of fact, they'll actually start warming up a little bit. And with just the right conditions, these two objects might actually end up uh, creating just enough heat around each other to basically heat each other up quite dramatically, as you can see. So okay, this is maybe a little bit too dramatic. Obviously, this is not a habitable world. But here we have two objects where one of them actually almost instantly got liquid water. And this is actually, oh, never mind, it's now too dry, too hot. Uh, and this is something that could definitely happen in other star systems and maybe even happen right here in our own solar system. So these binary planets um, are essentially rogue planets. They could be traveling across space and across uh, the galaxy uh, completely by themselves, but actually have conditions that would be warm enough for, uh, well, for really anything, for life to exist, for uh, for liquid water. And let's actually try to create this here. Uh, I'm going to place them just at the right distance and give them just enough mass to essentially make these two worlds, uh, or at least one of these worlds, habitable. And here, let's change the composition, removing some of the water because it does have a little bit too much giving it some continents on the surface as well. And so here we have these two objects that are basically orbiting around one another in a relatively stable orbit, but because of the amount of tidal heating uh, generated inside the planets, the volcanoes and the actual uh, friction itself generates enough temperature to create the liquid water here. Now, this is something that might be happening inside objects like Europa and Ganymede, um, and of course Enceladus, where we believe that the tidal effects from Jupiter and from other moons uh, around Jupiter, and, and uh, of course Saturn as, as well, in case of um, Enceladus, actually creates these uh, relatively habitable conditions inside the oceans on those moons. But here we have two planets, two rogue planets, two binary rogue planets, with no star that have these similar conditions. Basically, this is actually very comfortable, about eight degrees Celsius. Um, it does deviate a little bit, 
but obviously no star to make these objects um, have any light on the surface. So you could potentially have life here. You could actually have very interesting life, but obviously these planets would not really be this way for forever. They would not have this energy generated um, indefinitely because as you can probably imagine with time, these objects will actually start uh, losing this energy and become more and more tightly locked to each other. And this is kind of what happened to our moon. Our moon is now tightly locked to Earth and it's always facing Earth. So the tidal effects on the moon are actually very low compared to uh, the effects that the moon creates on our planet. So maybe within about a billion years or so, um, after of course creating this life, this object would actually then become tidally locked. And I'm gonna show you how this looks like in a second. And um, once it becomes tidally locked, it's basically going to freeze over and become super cold. So as a tidally locked object, it's getting practically no tidal power uh, from its planet anymore and eventually starts freezing over and becoming a dry, cold world, uh, similar to, uh, I guess, Enceladus and Europa. So there still might be a little bit of tidal heat generated underneath the ice shelf, um, inside the deep uh, oceans. But with time, as this object becomes more and more tidally locked, even that will stop being generated and um, it will essentially become a dead world. But for the first billion years or so, these two objects might actually have uh, enough potential to create life. And because we know there are tons and tons of rogue planets out there, and some of them might actually have energy generated from within them, uh, we believe that the chance for finding such an unusual world that could actually have tons and tons of heat generated from tidal power is actually pretty high. As a matter of fact, uh, there's a very high chance that many rogue planets have moons and those moons might be tidally heated similar to the one we see here. But the problem of course is discovering these objects and because they're so dark, because they're most likely very far away and because they're not very massive, it's very, very, very difficult to find them. We haven't really seen any um, official rogue planets just yet. We've seen objects that kind of classify as brown dwarfs, which are kind of like the uh, very, very massive Jupiter-like objects but we haven't really seen any rogue planets. And uh, our belief about the rogue planets comes from the fact that we think our solar system must have lost a couple or maybe even three planets um, as they got kicked out of the solar system. And so if our solar system lost three, imagine how many billions and billions uh, of rogue planets are out there are flying through space right here between stars in the vastness of interstellar space. So there's definitely a lot of things for us to explore and to discover and quite a lot of opportunities for us to find life in the universe where we don't actually expect to find it, such as, for example, in between stars. But until we actually discover something, I guess I can't really speculate anymore. Anyway, if you've enjoyed this video, don't forget to subscribe, share this video with someone who loves learning about space, and maybe even support this channel Patreon because it does help me a lot. I'll see you guys tomorrow. Thank you for watching, space out, and as always, bye-bye.